Hello and thanks for watching. In this video, I'll be walking you through how to use the retail module in our ACRE apartment development model. Now, if you're using this module, it means that the apartment development project you're analyzing includes some component of retail, more than likely a ground floor retail, uh, generally a small percentage of net operating income. Nonetheless, a component in your apartment development and it is necessary to underwrite that component. And so to access the retail module, we're gonna to head to the underwriting tab. Now more than likely you've already seen other tutorials and you're familiar with the, the general layout of the model. However, uh, along the top here, we have some buttons, navigation buttons to take you to various sections of the model. And the retail module obviously would be included in the operations section. So I'll, we'll click that, it takes us to our operating period cash flows where we're modeling uh, our residential rental income, uh, and other income, et cetera. Now, as we scroll through our operating cash flows, you'll see this toggle, uh, no retail versus include retail. And so by default, it's set to no retail. However, if we click this include retail button, the retail module will turn on. As you'll see, a new tab will appear along the bottom called the retail income tab, where we can underwrite the retail income, uh, both rental and uh, recovery, uh, add in some uh, vacancy, uh, model out our operating expenses specific to the retail component, and then think through reserves that are necessary for uh, these retail tenants. And you'll find back on the underwriting tab that when we click that include retail, and, or essentially we turn the retail module on, a few rows were added to the underwriting tab. The first being right below our total other income, a retail income net of expenses, think of it as an, an NOI of retail, is added to our income. And then down in our capital expenditures, a retail leasing cost reserve row is also uh, inserted into the underwriting tab. And both of these rows flow from the assumptions we make on the retail income tab. So let's get into the specifics of the uh, retail underwriting. We start first with the retail base rental income. It's here where we'll, where we'll drop in the tenants. We can add or delete tenants depending on the retail rent roll. You would enter suite, the suite uh, for each tenant uh, as well as the tenant name. Uh, if you don't have a tenant in place yet, you just uh, either type in speculative or vacant. Uh, the lease start date, and this is important because income specific to retail will begin for each tenant as of this lease start date. If there's free rent, you'll want that uh, free rent to be the difference between our rent start and our lease start. Now why this matters is operating expenses specific to these tenants will begin at lease start. However, rent will start on at this month. We have, of course, the square footage for each tenant. Uh, any annual bumps included in that in their uh, uh, lease, and then the rent per square foot per year for each tenant. Then we move to recovery income. What share of uh, each tenant's pro rata operating expenses will each tenant be recovering or reimbursing to the landlord. And so in uh, a straight triple net lease, 100% would be recovered. Uh, the landlord would recover 100% of operating expenses from each tenant. And so this here is left as 100%. But you'll notice here there's a recovery start date. And similar to the rent start, this is the month in which uh, the tenant begins to reimburse the landlord. And so by default, this is set to be lease start. But depending on the structure of the lease, it may be that, that uh, reimbursements don't begin until maybe the rent start date. And that's where we have this assumption. And then finally, we have pro rata share of operating expenses. Now by default, it's pro rata based on square footage, but that may not always be the case. And so we have this assumption here. And so between uh, rental income, recovery income, we arrive at a potential rate retail income line. 
and then we can model in some vacancy for the retail to arrive at an effective gross revenue for the retail. Then we move to retail operating expenses. And we have a few assumptions that are uh, automatically set for you. Uh, fixed versus variable expenses, it's just set to 0% fixed. Uh, expense growth is set to the operating expense growth assumption as outlined here on the underwriting tab. Uh, and then we have the uh, rent per square foot per year. I'm sorry, not rent the expense per square foot per year for each expense type. And uh, you don't have the ability to, to change necessarily the expense types. You could change this value here, but there's not the option to add or delete uh, retail operating expenses. And the reason for that is uh, generally in this sort of ground floor retail, they're typically triple net leases, the expenses are, are less important. So, so digging into them is, is less of a factor. Nonetheless, there are four line items to choose from. And so we arrive at some total operating expenses. You'll notice because uh, in this assumption here, we're recovering 100% of that, the recovery income matches the total operating expenses. Thus, effective gross revenue minus total operating expenses gives us a retail income net of expenses. And this value flows back to the underwriting tab right here. And it becomes an additional income to the project. Now important to note, uh, there is the general vacancy and credit loss. Notice it excludes retail income. If we look at this formula, this 5% is only on the residential component. And so this retail income net of expenses includes, if we recall, that 8% retail vacancy. And so finally, we are going to underwrite our retail leasing cost reserve. And so we'll set uh, some assumptions for uh, leasing. A renewal probability between a new lease and a renewal lease. Uh, or, or in other words, what's the probability that a lease renews versus uh, the tenant vacates and a new lease is signed. Uh, the average retail market rent between a renewal lease and a new lease. Tenant improvements on a renewal versus a new lease. Leasing commission and lease term. And when we take the weighted average of each, we calculate a leasing cost per year or an average leasing cost per year. And to understand that, what we do is we look at the length of a lease term. We calculate the tenant improvement and leasing cost for both new and renewal leases. And so we're saying every 10 years, uh, this particular deal will spend 99,000 in leasing costs on a new lease uh, 103,000, and again, at a 30% renewal probability, 103,000 on renewal leases at that 70%. Uh, the, and then we look at, so right, that's over 10 years. We divide that by 10. That gives us, for the new component, 9,900. For the renewal component, 14,763. The sum of those is our leasing reserve here, 24,000 change. And that flows over to our underwriting tab, Retail leasing cost reserve 24663. And so as we look at it, the impact of this is that the uh, income obviously flows to a, the NOI, which affects value. Uh, the reserve flows into our DCF, which affects returns. And thus we can uh, more fully account for that ground floor retail in our apartment development uh, project. So that again is the retail module. Uh, if you have questions, please uh, reach out and thanks for your time.